The Land Rover Defender is a real icon, not only when we talk about off-road capability, also when we talk about its unique design. But maybe that's the reason why it took Land Rover so long to set up a brand new one. But now it's the time. We saw a premiere last year at the IA in Frankfurt, but now we're here with a brand new car in Africa to find out how it drives, what else it delivers, and if it got what it takes to be an icon as well. Looking around the um, car regarding to the uh, materials they used and the craftsmanship, um, what you do find in the car is loads of nice stuff, like something that looks like carbon fiber in the doors, something that looks a bit like leather or chrome. You do also find something like screws you can see that gives the car a bit like the technical touch. And um, then you do find something like leather if you want. Uh, but if you look at the standard car, what you do find, for instance, here at the um, dashboard or the top side of the door is a soft touch material that looks a bit like a soft rubber. And when it gets dust on it, it doesn't look like it will last long and it doesn't look like you may ever gonna clean it. But Land Rover told us that all the stuff in the car is designed to last forever and to be cleaned easily. To make the new Defender a very nice successor of the old Defender, the designers did a lot to make him look like a Defender. But of course the car still is boxy, but not as boxy as its predecessor, because one reason is aerodynamic. So you do find some more curves in the car, but I still think it really looks like a pure off-roader. So when you look for instance here, we have this yeah, very nicely shaped frames for the headlamps. By the way, the headlamps, they always come as standard with LED technology. And if you buy from the trim level HSE onwards, you will find them as matrix LED lights as well. Uh, then you have the very nice big Defender signature here and this special bumper. Yeah, you have to pay extra, but this really is a off-road front bumper and a winch as well if you want and of course a proper underwrite protection is there as well and something i really do like a lot with the old one and i do like it a lot here is this up here it looks a bit like these alloy stuff but it's not it's plastic and the reason for that is not cost and not weight it's only security because if they yeah, get loose uh, while an incident with a pedestrian they look like blades so you're not allowed to have them as metal uh, anymore and then we look for, from the from the front to the whole car it really looks very massive very solid one reason are these wheel arches here this plastic wheel arches they really give the car a solid very massive and off-roady look from the front what i really do like with the defender interior is the dashboard because it looks modern and it is a handle so you can grab nearly everywhere and it's really very strong and in the middle of it the um touch screen is mounted it look, looks like yeah it's like it's it's hovering there and what I really do like is this piece here is part of the body structure of the car. And I really like the idea because that's for me, that's a part of the Defender um, idea to show technology and to make it touchable. And, and this in the, yeah, in the purest meaning of the wording, you can really touch parts or important parts of the car. I really do like that a lot. You can see that the Defender offers the perfect condition for all upcoming adventures by only looking at the numbers. In addition to a ground clearance of almost 30 cm and a wading depth of 90 cm, it offers an approach angle of 38 degrees and a departure angle of 40. It can tow up to 3.5 tons and up to 900 kg can be loaded. The Defender also scores with a roof load of up to 300 kg static and 168 kg dynamic. So now we drive on a track which is called Van Sills Path. And this is some Dutch guy who found this, yeah, path through the middle of nowhere. And what we do now, we drive in low range, the car's fully up with the air suspension, which means we have the full ground, ground clearance now. And uh, this, what is in front of us now, is what I call driving off-road. We completely agreed while driving through the bush that, I'm, that we're happy not to drive our own car because with all these branches going on the car, I think it's not fun to yeah, polish it afterwards. So I think the foil you can buy as an optional extra for this car maybe is a good investment. Driving on these rocky roads, what you instantly feel is we have the perfect seats on board. So they not only offer loads of comfort, they also offer the amount of support you really need to have no problems with your back after a day in the mud and the rocks. How modern is the new Defender? 
So when you buy the base model, you will find standard and standard instrument cluster two, ground instruments, a small display in the middle. But if you use the next trim level, you do find a 12.3 inch full digital cockpit. You do find a 10 inch uh, touchscreen in the center console for the infotainment. And you do find two SIM cards mounted in the car completely independent from each other to provide you with connectivity and for instance that car can do an over-the-air update and still works absolutely fine. I think what more can you ask for regarding to having a modern car? Ja, was man hier sehr schön merkt beim Berg runterfahren ist eben, dass wir when you drive in low range um, down the hill here you instantly feel that with that program you automatically have the downhill assist activated and so the car really keeps its speed and if you want to go faster you just use the paddle um, to give it a bit more of power, but you don't have to be worried about anything at all while driving downhill. When the new Defender hits the market, there are going to be four different powertrains available. There are two diesel. One is the so-called D200, which is a four-cylinder, two-liter diesel engine that delivers 200 horsepower. And you can have the more powerful one, which is the two-liter four-cylinder as well. It's the 240, and that, of course, then delivers 240 horsepower. On top of this, you do find two petrol. One is a four-cylinder, two-liter petrol engine. That is the P300, and that means 300 horsepower. And there is the new six-cylinder engine, which is a mild hybrid, three liter, and that then delivers 400 horsepower. All of the cars, they always come with all-wheel drive, and of course, they do all have a standard and eight-speed automatic gearbox on board. So what is in front of me now is really something where you can prove what the Defender is capable of. So everybody who says, this is not a real Defender, I'm going to prove it is. What I do now is I just drive like the instructor shows. So I'm not looking at the surface, I'm only looking at the instructor's finger to show me where to go or where not. One typical thing for a Defender is it's your best mate. And I think we're going to prove this here because normally I have to go by feet downhill. So if you really watch these guys and follow their instructions, you have loads of fun. And it's quite easy to do the job, this job here then. And if you do this, you can just have fun and not have any problems at all. Looking at the side, what I see instantly are these big claddings here, the wheel arches and on the side of the car. That really gives the car the off-road look you're looking for. And then another thing is the new Defender comes with quite big wheels, 18 inch steel, as standard, but you can order up to 22 inch alloy if you want. But I really do like these white steel wheels a lot because they remind me of the predecessor of the car and I do think they fit the new one as well perfectly. Looking a bit more further down the car, you find this here. This is not a snorkel for uh, driving this 90 centimeters of wading depth. No, this is here, especially for us in Africa, optional feature to get more fresh air into the car and not only the dust from the road. And then when you look, here, you of course can buy loads of, fix, of, of bits and pieces for the car as an extra optional feature, but you can also have packages. And then you get stuff like this rack here or the extra tire on the rooftop or the ladder here you, you can use to climb up on the top of your car. And yes, to make the car the real offer that you're looking for, you have very short overhangs front and rear. And with that car that features 29.3 centimeters of ground clearance, important here, you have to have the air suspension for it. It comes as standard with a 110, but you have to pay extra if you drive the base model of the 90. So now it's really getting a bit, yeah, unfair, let's say that way. Actually, I don't want to be the tire of that car. Um, what we just did is we activated the camera system at the front of the car because that gives us the opportunity to see the side of our front tires uh, because we have loads of yeah quite bad stones in here um, and they want us to just cross them with a standard part of the tire because if they hit the side of the tire will be instantly gone and so we can see that quite nice here and then he said I think a very nice tip was use the rear view mirrors to see the rear tires because very often they've simply been forgotten. For the new Defender, there will be three different center consoles available. The first one is the one without the center console, which I like a lot. Then you find this one here, which is a standard center console with a big luggage compartment. And I think you can have a fridge as well. And then there's the one we drive at the moment, our diesel, which is um, a foldable extra seat, which means you have cup holders if it's fold down. And if you want to have an extra person in the first row, you can just put it up and you can drive with three people right here. So now the most technical part of our tour is in front of us and therefore I selected in the terrain response um, rock roll mode um, because it really gets rocky and downhill as well. So as always, business as usual, listen to the instructor and hope it works. So. Ok, 
can really feel how the car works. What is very interesting is you don't really feel how much the car is working. Um, it doesn't feel, um, yeah, 100% the way it is. It looks a lot more interesting from the outside. I think one yeah, key thing of the Defender is you feel safe and comfortable. And this really is something the car delivers. So now we have a bit of uphill in front of us, not only easy. And now the Defender can prove again that the new Defender is a real Defender. So let's see how that works. Still in low range, still the suspension completely up. It all feels so easy in that car. Actually, it's really hard for me to find anything at all that I don't like with that car. Looking at the rear of our Defender, it's a bit like a mixture out of historic and future. And so when you look at these new taillights, they are really modern, but the shape of them reminds me of the shape of the daytime running lights from the front. And I really do like this graphic a lot. Looking for something where you can say, yeah, this is typical for a Defender, look at that shape here. These wide shoulders and this quite straight part up here, that's typical for a Defender. Yes, it's a bit more modern interpreted, but really, really like this a lot. And when you look at the tailgate, of course, this goes to the side and this gives you the view into the reasonable size boot, but more about that later. And then, of course, to give the car the off-road um, capabilities you need, you find the extra wheel mounted on the tailgate as well. And when you look at the whole shape and look of the car from the, from the rear, you instantly see that car goes absolutely everywhere. The Defender 110 offers a maximum loading volume of 1,075 liters behind the second seat row. If you fold down the seats, up to 2,380 liters are available. The numbers of the 7-seater are a little lower, but it still offers 231 liter of storage space behind row 3. Actually, at the moment I'm driving the diesel, which is a 2-liter 4-cylinder turbo, and that delivers 240 horsepower, 430 newton meters of maximum torque, and is combined here is all the new Defenders with a 8-speed uh, automatic gearbox and, of course, all-wheel drive. And that engine really is a pleasure to drive. It's absolutely powerful enough to have great fun even here on loose sand. It really works absolutely well. And yeah, an absolutely pure pleasure to be in that car with a diesel. There's no need for the uh, bigger petrol one because that is powerful enough. As you may hear, even on this uh, surface, it's quite quiet in the car. And the reason for that is that the diesel as well as the petrol engines are very nicely insulated. So it's a very quiet place to be. Talking about, um, yeah, modern connectivity. Of course, the Land Rover Defender is delivering a modern infotainment system that offers you Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You do find um, USB-A, USB-C um, sockets here everything you need in that direction. So we do find with the Defender, the old yeah, off-road world connected with the new modern world. So now we drive on a mixture out of gravel and rocks. And some of these rocks, they're quite sharp and they do just yeah, pinch into the wheels. The thing is, if you have the standard surface of the tire, that won't harm it at all. But if it goes to the side of the tire, that instantly gives you a big problem. And that's the reason why we just had a short stop over to change the first of the tires, but fortunately not on our car. We have a system on board that they call ClearSign Ground View, which is something like a, a transparent hood. It's a camera-based system that gives us um, a picture of our tires moving on the ground, which is quite good if you really want to see what obstacles are in front or side of your tires. But um, to be really honest, while driving like now 20, 22, kilometers per hour you can't reuse really it because you're far too quick but I think if you crawl and you really need to see what's in front or on the side of your tire that's very helpful. So this is downhill now and we can use the downhill assist easy here and the good thing is we can adjust the speed of the downhill drive with the buttons of the cruise control to so just go with minus minus and you set the lowest speed and that really works completely smooth and easy downhill. So we're here at the Skeleton National Reserve Park and as you see very, very nice. And you're not allowed to drive in normally, but we have, a, we have permission. And interestingly, this is a desert, sand desert. And as you see here, quite, yeah, good sand, good for the car, easy to drive on, but a bit more down the road, or the path, loose sand. And so not only the others got stuck, we as well. 
So we've slept neutral and lifted into low range. Did you hear what David said there, Alex? Yeah. So again, just creeping just to get onto the ladder. Cool, you're on, stop, stop. So when you're ready. So do you mean push it, push it yeah, yeah. instantly? Yeah, Go. So full throttle. Schwung, wir kommen in Schwung, wir kommen in Schwung. Ja. Just keep going now, back up to your left. Keep going, keep going. Jetzt haben wir den Schwung, den wir wollen. Okay, Jetzt können wir wieder zurück in den Track und können zum anderen fahren. During our trip through the Skeleton Coast National Park, we mostly followed an almost completely dry river. The underground sometimes allowed relatively high speeds. And so the water crossings were even more fun. Something that you do feel a lot while driving very quick, like we do at the moment on sand, is that car is very nice to yeah, put into a controlled drift and get it back out again. And even if you don't have all the assistance systems on, that car is always under perfect control and always provides you with great fun while enjoying this surface as we do at the moment. So I just stopped because what now comes is very important to me. When we talk about the old Defender, I never fit in. My knee were in the dashboard, my hat were in the, in the roof and my elbow was, yeah, it felt like it was outside of the car, my, my shoulder the same. And this is completely different with the new one. You, as you can see, I'm nearly two meters tall and I sit perfectly in the car. Plenty of space for my hat, for my knees and for my shoulders as well. Of course, yeah, I do hit the B pillar a bit, but I'm quite a white person. So really, really loads and loads of space. And you can see here, we have, we're driving this, the, the version with this extra seat at the front. And this, even though it is a proper seat, it only benefits the car because you have your armrest, you have your two cup holders, really something that absolutely works also for tall persons. And important is, or funny is, Still, maybe you remember, with the old Defender, you sat very wide outside at the edge of the car. And this is still the same with that car. And I think it's really funny how they made it, how they conserved this, so that you have this, the typical Defender position, but a lot more comfortable. And the thing now is how it looks behind me, because is there enough space for another person? Let's find out now. So I won't change my seating position. I close the door, come on. Door closed, I step in. You see there's a practical handle here for people who are not as tall as I am. But I haven't changed my seating position, as you saw. Loads of space for my hat, about 10 centimeters, about five to 10 in front of my knees. Shoulders fine. This is now a car which is not only an off-roader anymore, or not only a car for people who wants to say, I can afford a Defender. This is a family car. So you can easily travel with two or three kids in that car and everybody will have enough space and will have loads of comfort. Now I'm on tarmac with the new Defender. Um, until now we only drove off-road gravel grounds and all that stuff. And I have to tell you that really is a pleasure. The steering is precise enough to really have the car on the road the way you want. The suspension works perfectly. It's quite quiet in the car. The only noise you may hear at the moment are the tires on this yeah, not very nice time again. We have this, this um, um, off-road tires on the car, but the rest really very nice and smooth. If you, you do cornering with the car, it's always nice and precise to drive. We only have this bit of a shaky thing, which you know or may remember from the old one, but now it's a lot better to control it. It feels a lot more, yeah, safe and comfortable. So this really is a place where you can stay on road as well, and the car delivers here a lot, lot more than I expected. When it comes to assistance and safety systems, the Defender does not miss anything. Always on board are a 3D surround camera system, a low traction launch assist, trailer stability assist, the attention assistant, an autonomous emergency brake assist, both downhill and hill start assist, a 360 parking assist, a cruise control, a lane departure warning, a traffic sign recognition with adaptive speed limiter, the weight sensing system for water crossings and more. Optionally, the list can even be extended by packages and individual components. Talking about consumption, uh, we drove the petrol, the mild hybrid with 400 horsepower as well as the car we're actually driving, the 240 horsepower diesel. And of course, we didn't match the figures that Land Rover is putting into their data sheets because 
most of the time we drove off-road, we were quite quick and we have, have had, had heavy land. So um, driving the diesel, I think the official figure is 7.6 per 100 km driven. Um, we used a lot more, a little more than 13. Uh, and if we, the time when we have had hard rocks and all the stuff, we even use a lot more than that. But I think if you drive that car from day to day to day, standard driving on tarmac, you should expect something about 10, maybe 11-ish, but not more. That was my quite long test drive with the new Land Rover Defender. We did about 800 kilometers in Africa. Most of it, I would say 99.9% .9 off-road. And the new Defender really is an absolutely nice car because the new Defender delivers stuff you will not find with the old one. You find extraordinary space in the car. You will find very nice comfort in the car and you will find on-road capability in the car that you will never have seen with the old Defender. But the question still is, is the old Defender a new Defender or is the new Defender as good as the old Defender? I would say these hardcore Defender guys will tell me last, yeah, this is not a real Defender anymore because we do not have differential locks like mechanic locks. We will not find a differential lock at the front axle. It doesn't work and that car is not the same. And I can tell you we gave that car a lot of different stuff to chew on, like sand, gravel, stones, mud, water, and tarmac, everything you can imagine. And that car has no problem with nothing at all. And I can tell you, this is a real Defender. Maybe it will not be the perfect car for these 3%, 4% of hardcore fans, but for the rest, it is not only an off-road anymore. This now is a family car and you will have loads and loads of fun off-road and on-road as well. <laughs>